Yo, what's up Rare Candy? It's your boy Zach Lesage, and today we're going to be going over a testing grounds video. So this is a video between myself on the right and Michelle Babin, my girlfriend, on the left hand side. So shoutouts to Michelle. You can follow her on Twitter at Michelle Babin TCG if you want to see what's going on in her Pokemon world. But shout out to her for helping me out film this video. So she's going to be playing the Intellion VMAX deck and that deck is pretty cool. You can check out in the description. We will be having some in real life deck profiles go up and that's gonna go for both the Intellion VMAX and the Rillaboom VMAX deck. Um, so her deck focuses on kind of it's a half attacking, half energy denial aspect using Intellion VMAX's first attack to bounce energies with cards like Crushing Hammer to really put your opponent in a rough spot. And for myself, I'm playing the Rillaboom VMAX, so it kind of functions the same way as an Alolan Executor Rowlet deck. So Rowlet Alolan Executor Row Eggs, basically Rillaboom deck. So it adds in the Rillaboom VMAX to add in an extra punch, and the deck kind of feels like a kind of buffed up Tapu Bulu deck. Um, going into the match, our thoughts would be that it would be fairly equal um, so I'm sure you'll see how it plays out. I'm not going to ruin the surprise for anyone, so stay tuned for that. It's crazy that I'm actually mulliganing so many times, because I'm looking at the list here, and the deck actually plays a decent bit of basics, because you got to understand that the Rillaboom V is a basic Pokemon. Rowag, basic Pokemon. Grookey, basic Pokemon. Um, and there's some other basic Pokemon in there too, like the Dene, so we'll see. I think I finally got a basic here. And uh, we're just getting set up, and we'll see exactly how it goes. And Michelle's starting the game off. She starts off with a Snom. And I'm not going to lie, some of her starts were not the greatest in these games. Um, same thing going on with me. I think a lot of it, a lot of it might just be from these being early builds for the decks. So do keep that in mind when you are viewing these videos and the deck profile videos. If if you're watching this three months from when the video got released, yeah, the lists, if they're still played, 100% are probably gonna be a little bit better. But uh, it's this is this is the fun of testing grounds where we're, we're trying to be the pioneers of this format, figure out exactly what the format, doing, doing the skeleton works for you so you guys have a base to start off from. So she goes Snom Pass, I'm like, yo, I don't really want to play Marnie because your hand's kind of jank, but what if you had a supporter in there? And we're both not going to cut for the Marnie. Both of our, both of us kind of agree that we're not going to see those cards for a while. Here you can see I just can retreat the Grookey into a Rao Egg. And I can get pretty set up here, so I, so I have a pretty solid start. I'm just going through double checking exactly what we have prize cards and i'm like in case she has some way to take care of a grookey i'm not entirely sure of exactly how her deck's gonna work out um we'll uh we'll see and i'm just evolving straight for the gorilla boom straight for the neck and i'm ready so i'd rather be definitely on my side than michelle's side because she's just chilling with a snom and i'm chilling with a board like i'm, I'm attacking next turn and she's like Huh, let's see how it goes. So we're going to see that she top decks. And from what it looks like here, it looks like she got a Frost Moth. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough choice here. She's like, where do I touch the energy? You also see that there's an Articuno GX in her deck. So shout out to Eric Smith from Rare Candy for telling me about it. I was trying to, when I was going over the original builds when we were planning these uh, games, he was like, yo, you should probably include Articuno if you're trying to go with an energy denial. And I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's use Articuno GX and absolutely just tear our opponents up, ruining their energies. So you can especially see with a deck like this that plays a decent bit of energies, you can discard them. The only issue is that Rillaboom can get them back. And I'm just going Professor's Research here because I'm just... Let, let's get an overwhelming board state and try to dominate this game. It doesn't necessarily who I attack with. doesn't matter who I attack with at this point. 
I think uh, Ra Rowlet, Rowex is a better attacker right now. It's in the active position, it's getting the knockout, and that's all that really matters. It's not it's not a Rillaboom VMAX deck, it's going to be a Rillaboom deck. The same way that a Fire Toolbox deck would be like Nine Tails and Welder and Jirachi, it, it, it never truly was Ability Zard. Even if I called it Ability Zard, Fire Toolbox, Welder and Friends, whatever it, whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, the core is remaining the same. And that and that's really where this deck is probably going to re remain the same. It's probably going to be Rao Egg with Rillaboom to power that up really quickly, and then you splash in attackers. You could say the same thing for Michelle's deck, where it's uh, a Frostmoth build that kind of focuses on different attackers this one's a little bit more of an energy denial mid mid-range control deck so you can see that she got her articuno gx ready and she's ready to use her gx attack there to discard my energies thing is i could just use my gx attack back the next turn to do 200 damage and that would get a knockout so yeah she's gonna flip her gx attack get that intellion v powered up as well I'm just reminding her that uh, you do need to discard the energy off Articuno. We've played other games with uh, in our in the last testing ground that we did with the Copperage of VMAX using Lucario Melmetal GX, and we always get confused with those cards, so I'm like, when in doubt, read what the card does so we don't forget. Because um, some of the cards like Articuno GX, Lucario Melmetal are not as commonly used as others. So now we got up our second Rillaboom. And we're just chalking, I'm just chalking through this game where it's, I'm powered up, I'm powering up my Rillaboom VMAX on the bench, so I'm ready to attack some big Pokemon. And I'm gonna go down to three prize cards after taking this knockout on the Articuno GX. So if you look at my board state, six to three, fully set up versus not set up, it, it's really easy to tell who's going to win this game. And it's, it's showing, uh, kind of, it's promising for the Rillaboom deck, a deck that really didn't get a chance to take off in the sword and shield formats um whether or not it had it didn't have rillaboom v max at all but the point is we did have the core of the deck with the rawag and the rillaboom i i don't think we had enough time to explore that format with tournaments uh, getting prematurely canceled at toronto regionals uh, but it's one of those things where this might be the format to explore it a little bit more now that it does have the new partner of rillaboom v max and it's also going to be exciting to see if Intelli and VMAX on Michelle's side can live up to this format. Because we do have a lot of strong Pokemon, like ADP, Zacian V, and I actually think the Intelli and VMAX deck can do well against... Um, it can do well against ADP. Because you can lift those energies. We can see that there's Chinchino Control decks, or Chinchino Mill decks, that do take away energies that have done pretty well against ADP. So, might be a counter to that. Definitely something to consider there. And if you're watching this video up to this point, first and foremost, thank you so much. I know that um, sometimes tabletop games are not everyone's jam, and they're more about the PTCGO action, or maybe tabletop games are your jam. If you have any suggestions for these decks, or if you have a crazy build or something, let us know in the comments below. We always love uh, the support that we get from our fans and people who watch our videos, and we would love to hear some feedback from y'all. So, jumping back into the game, powering up that real boom, and we're gonna see exactly how this goes. I think I got an air balloon in my hand, or maybe I'm just gonna use Malolana. Malolana is just gonna wipe off any damage that Michelle just did with the Intellion B. So, yeah, Mal and Lana, I'm just gonna pitch. Um, in, immediately after this, I noticed that I had a Pokemon communication in my hand, and I did not mean to discard that air balloon. At the same time, I was in a much better position. So I was like, okay, we'll deal with it. And this is kind of the point where I was like, um, I think this is where I felt like I truly won the game. I'm just gonna hit for the base 130. I'm not discarding any energies. And it puts Michelle in a position where she can't attack next turn. She So she's put in a really difficult position there. Like, she can attack, but then I just do the full effect of Rillaboom VMAX and discard my energies and win the game. Because VMAX Pokemon are worth three prize cards. 
And another thing to note, it, it took me by surprise a few times when I was reading Rillaboom VMAX. Its attack seems like it would, it would cost three, but it only costs, uh, it, it actually costs four energies. So, so make sure that you attach all four energies. It's a little bit weird. It's not simply an energy and a Rillaboom away. Don't get caught up in that if you are trying this deck out. See, Michelle's using the new card full bucket there. Searching your deck for two water energies to get powered up. That's going to work out really nicely with Frostmoth. And she's also realizing it at this point, too, that she cannot attack with the Intellion VMAX this turn. Because, again, I'm just going to swing hard and do some damage. So, watching her retreat and getting set up there and yeah there's a quick wall the thing that burns is that she actually took away my boss's order with that marty last turn so i'm actually i'm praying for a top deck here so ho hopefully hopefully that's uh how it works out Okay, and I'm using the new card, Turfield Stadium. I can just get myself uh, set up here. I'm going to get out my second Rillaboom VMAX. So the deck kind of sets itself up. I'm not entirely sure how the deck is going, like if it works well with Turfield. And it's weird because this deck does play quite a few evolution Pokemon. I have the Thwackies, the Rillaboom, the Rillaboom VMAX. The, the biggest thing is I, I can already search things out anyways. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to waste time here. It, so it's, it, it really didn't do anything in this game. It's probably something to explore a little bit more as we go through the motions of the set. So you can see I powered up with both of my Rillabooms. We got the four there. And if you're playing against a Mewtwo deck, this deck can do 130 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50, 280 damage. So most tag team Pokemons are going to get absolutely destroyed against this deck. Um, it, it's difficult when it comes to the VMAX Pokemon. Um, something like Dragapult, you cannot one-shot. So there, I'm just taking my prize card. And she's going Marnie again. So I'm like, you can cut my hand. She's like, no chance, you're not going to see any of that. And you can tell that this is the, this is the unfortunate struggling of the deck in its final turns. She's, she has a long road to go up. Like she has to knock out two Rillaboom V maxes. So doing everything that she can right now to put herself in a better position. This is not like we're playing in a tournament best of three. I'm sure she would have scooped much earlier than this point. But it's, it's one of those things where fight, fighting to the death to see exactly where the matchup goes. Because a lot of people don't know how an entire matchup goes. A lot of people scoop before it gets too bad. And we can see that I top decked a boss's order there. So I'm just going to bring up the VMAX, discard my energies, and knock it out for 280 damage. So game one's going to go to myself, Zach, and we're going to see exactly how Michelle goes here. So she's just uh, shuffling up. I'm shuffling up. And by the way, if you're watching this video and you're like, yo, I don't have Rebel Clash cards. I don't want to print out proxies. I want to play on PTCGO, but I don't have the code cards. You can go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code RAREcandy, and save 5% off your order. If you are one of our Patreons at patreon.com slash RAREcandyTCG, we do have a special code there. So you could save a little bit more than that. So be sure to check that out. That being said, jumping back into this game, we got Michelle starting with a little bit of a better start. I'm not entirely sure why she went for the Evolution Incense. We talked about it for a little bit and she's like, oh yeah, I guess it didn't really make sense. Um, I was trying to thin out, but my idea was like, I was just trying to do something on my first turn. And that's what some players get caught up into. So I was like, yep, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make it burn. I'm just attaching an energy there and I'm gonna go with a Marnie so we can see that she lost her access of her evolution incense that would have been in her deck 
that Pokemon that she could have drawn into is now sh is at the bottom of her deck. So it was actually a negative play on her behalf. And for me, I'm like, uh, my start's not particularly great. I'm just gonna go for a turf field. And Rillaboom V does have an attack that you can search your deck for a couple Pokemon and bench them. So it's not going overly terrible for me right now. Just not as quick as a start that we saw during the last game. And we're just shuffling up here, seeing what's good. Michelle's like, is that really what the attack does? Wow, that's actually kind of good. And I'm like, yeah, you want to know what? It actually, it, it ain't bad. But this is where it gets a little bit more tough. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know exactly how I feel about this. She's just going to detonate that hand away. There's nothing that a switch is going to do, an ordinary rod, a team yell grunt. Those are all cards that she wants to be using a little bit later on in the game. And just deciding on what she wants to discard with the quick ball. It's like a boss. Boss is ordered there. So getting a little bit more set up with a Jirachi. Definitely not bad. And... Just want to organize that, make sure that I tap the deck. And yeah, she's going to go for the Stellar Wish, see what she can do here. There's the Marnie, so my plan with my hand that had the switch in it, I was going to switch and grow that Grookey into a Rillaboom next turn with Rowag. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen at all for me. So she's shuffling through. I'm going to shuffle that deck just to make sure that it's thoroughly shuffled here. Um, even though that I have 100% trust in Michelle, she is my partner in life. One of those things where you always want to make sure that you're playing Pokemon to your utmost fullest potential. And if you start getting sloppy now, you're going to get sloppy in tournaments. So we try to play um, to the utmost degree, especially when we're filming testing ground videos. So we can see that she got the, the Intellion VMAX. And she could start doing that 60 and bounce the energy technique, which is really going to kill me. Especially early game when I don't have access to the Rillaboom. And we're looking at my hand. That card kind of looks like a switch, but it's not a switch. It's actually, um, it's a energy recycler. So I'm going to use turf field. I'm going to manually power myself up. That's cool. Attach my energy and I'm going to go for my attack where I can search through, get some more basic Pokemon out. There's no reason for me not to. And I'm just like, hmm, well, there's really not that much choice. Choice. Um, my prize cards are a little meh. So I'm just going to search for a Grookey. That's all cool. I'll just have to attack with uh, Rao Eggs this game. But unfortunately, by me grabbing that Grookey, I put Michelle in a solid position where she can almost checkmate me here. She could go 160 and 60 to the Grookey, and then 160 to the Rowag, and then 60 to my other things. I've, I've really set her up nicely prize trade-wise. Um, not particularly just myself, it's just my start's not that strong. She's going to start taking away energies. And the reason why she took away my energy here is because she wasn't sure if she was going to get another energy. That being said, um, I probably would have waited on that because the energy discarding there, I, I like having Crushing Hammers in the deck. At the same time, this is not really a matchup that Crushing Hammer matters for, so it probably doesn't matter that she played it or not. So let's see. So the first card was actually a Water Energy. She's going to be good to get that knockout and place that 60 wherever she wants. And it's smart to put it on the Grookey because the Grookey can only evolve into a Thwacky. There are no rare candy in this deck. Unfortunately, because that's the title of our channel. But it is one of those things where the Grookey 
is probably going to get knocked out if it evolves or not. And at this point, she's like, yo, I could totally just start powering up other things. I, she, she realized the strangle position. Um, I did ask her again while we were doing this, why did you play the Switch? And she's like, oh, well, I wanted to get set up for next turn. But I was like, you could have always played the Switch next turn, right? So again, it's one of those things of sometimes when you do everything in a turn, um, things can get a little bit murky. If you want to ask yourself, does this really matter? What am I actually searching for? If she still needed like an energy, she could go for the full bucket. Or if she needed um, something else like that, the evolution incense. However, this is when your plays start to get too fancy and you really start affecting your game. You gotta learn to when to hit face or when you're not attacking at all. So there's the knockouts on my Rillaboom V. So she's gonna draw two prize cards there. And I'm gonna set up the Rawag. And like, yo, let's just get these Pokemon back into the deck. And I can go for Turfield, which is going to allow me to get out my Rillaboom. And now I can get out my Rillaboom V with this. Because again, prizing issues really suck sometimes. It's absolutely killing, killing me this game. Not necessarily like that's the worst thing that's happened to me this game. But it is one of those things where it, it, it does hurt. Okay, so shuffling it up a little bit more. You can see in Pokemon TCG, there's a lot of shuffling going on because we're always searching through our decks. And I'm just going to attach an energy and I'm going to go for the 150. No point of using the GX attack. Again, I'm, I play these games as if I don't know exactly what's in my opponent's deck until I know exactly what's in my opponent's deck. So she's just going to go for a crushing hammer. There's a heads. Might as well take off my energy, do anything that she can. Again, it's not going to really matter too much in this matchup. And she's just putting herself in a check. She's going to try to checkmate me out of this game. So there's an Intellian VMAX. So this is really how the deck's supposed to go, is where you remove their energies. You could use the first attack if they can't attach a lot of energies. So if they're not playing a deck that plays Rillaboom or a deck that plays uh, Welder, then you could often run them out of energies so that they can't get off their big attacks, which means your tell in VMAX is staying alive more often. And then you go for the 160-60 snipes after setting up your uh, damage very nicely. So this is just Michelle shuffling from the Cynthia. And we'll see exactly how this goes. Okay, so there's full bucket. This is the point where I'm like, yikes, she's all fully powered up with the Frost Moth. Got one in the front, one in the back. And I think she's just getting ready to attack here at this point. I know I'm getting the dice ready. I just know exactly what's going on. This is my, my, my heart saying, I'm like, I've lost this game. Um, I don't really see how I come back from here because she's getting the knockout on the Grookey. Three prize cards left and it seems again similar to last game these decks are either going to 6-0 their opponent or not and i have the opportunity to take the knockout here it's just if i take the knockout michelle has the 160 lined up in the back so i gotta go for not a knockout here and the unfortunate um the unfortunate circumstance that i'm falling in is like Okay, cool. I don't want to send out my Rillaboom because that's the only thing that can allow me to power up energies. But I do have access to Rillaboom VMAX. The issue is Rillaboom VMAX cannot, 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 cannot attack for anything. It can attack for one energy or four energies. And here I can only power up um, three energies in a turn. So I'm just going to hit for 50. That's what its first attack does. And I'm like... I'm just waiting for a boss's order here. And is she just looking through discard pile? Just double checking. There's Eldegoss for the boss order to win the game. And Eldegoss might be a bit of a weird pick in that deck right there. 
The only reason why is so they can get back Team Yell Grind or Boss Orders late in the game. So, shuffling up again. And jumping into the third game. I'm ready. I'm like, yo, I think I want to try going first. Don't know if that's any better or not, but... Again, here I am with the mulligans. So, shuffling it up. Make sure that we get a big shuffle. And I'm just getting the mats so that they're uh, perfectly aligned. So, getting that shuffle. Okay. So, didn't really see exactly what that card was. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's just play around with it. If it was a tournament, I would have called a judge at that point. But we're just playing a home game. Just figuring out exactly where the matchup is. And again, didn't really see where the card was. So, getting those prize cards set up. And I'm like, yo, what can I do here? I've noticed now that she hasn't really played too many stadiums in her deck or any. So I'm just going to put out my Turfield Stadium there. Get powered up with a... Sorry, get powered up with an Air Balloon and a Grass Energy. Probably should have used Turfield Stadium there to search something out. But I think I was trying to go with like a... Maybe I'm trying to go with a Professor's Research in my hands. So I think that's why I decided not to. I don't necessarily want to evolve into a Rillaboom VMAX right away because his attacks are very costly. And the setup potential of this Rillaboom V is a little bit better. So, for what I thought I was catching myself doing a misplay, I'm like, oh no, here I am making a misplay. What is up? You can see I'm nervous. It's game three. I got my legs shaking. I'm like, uh, I definitely want to win this. And she's like, okay, I'm going to get set up with a quick ball. And I'm like, maybe this matchup, the only thing going through my head, I'm like, maybe this matchup isn't as bad as... We thought it was after watching game one. I just got my butt handed to me game two. So this is really one that's pushing us both to our limits because we're like, not necessarily loving both of these decks, not necessarily hating both of these decks. What's really going to happen? So you can see she's getting set up with the Intellian V. And there's an energy. Pretty typical turn here. She's like, what does the first attack do again? I'm like, 40 snipe anywhere. So there's the 40 snipe. And I'm just like, yo, what do I want to do? So I'm just, I'm just going for it. I'm like, you want to know what? I'll, I'll just make it happen. There's the Rillaboom VMAX. And I'm like, okay, I gotta shuffle it up here. Let's see, let's see, let's see what we can shuffle up. Let's see what we can get off the top of our deck. Because I'm, I'm going for the win. So there's an energy. And I'm like, okay, let's pitch this hand away. Let's get set up. So there's my Grookey. There's my Pokemon communication. Putting away a Dedenne. And there's another Grookey. There's a Tag Call. And since Rao Egg is a Tag Team card, it does work out nicely. And there I was like, yo, do I want to grab the Mallow and Lana? I'm thinking about pitching my hand again next turn. I'm like, what card am I not going to ever use? Guzman Hala. Kind of, Guzman Hala is the one that kind of gets pushed aside a lot. It's either doing its job of searching out the turf field, the weakness guard energy, and an air balloon, or not. And the weakness guard energy is there because fire is a popular type. Same thing if you're playing in the Intellian deck. The Intellian deck is weak to lightning. The weakness guard is there is in case you run into a lightning deck. Now, these aren't going to be things that necessarily save your butt. But it's one of those things where it, it might just... It, it might. You might not lose as hard. You might actually be able to pull out a game. So, instead of walking into a death sentence, you have an opportunity. 
So we figured, with especially with the way that things are going, it seems like a good idea. So, she's getting set up there. You can see that this is going to search out either a Frost Moth or an Intellian VMAX. And she decided to go for a Frost Moth. That's probably fine. Okay. There's the Intellian VMAX. So, going over here, she's got her energy. She's set up. It's only going to do 60 this turn because, again, it's in the front. We'll be able to get it to the back. And if she does get it to the back, then she's going to start doing those 160 60s. So again, you can see how it's a mid-range control deck on the Intellian VMAX side. But as we can look at her hand, it doesn't look like there's a switch there. And there's the 60 damage, no energy to fling back. Because it only takes it from the active Pokemon. And I'm like, yo, let's just get set up here. Let's let's see what we can. There's my in Rillaboom V. Just going to put that down. Before I finish shuffling up, or at least I should have, uh, definitely use Turf Yields. Get it with Wacky. So I'm going to start uh, getting the secondary Pokemon Evolve. And I'm just going to start powering up this Rao Egg. Puts me in a position where I'm at 60. Can't get knocked out. Next turn, or at least I assume I can't get knocked out. So I'm just going to go for what I can go with and hit for the 150. Okay. And we're using Cynthia Caitlin there. Might as well get a Malolana to do some healing. Maybe I don't want that Pokemon in the active position for next turn. And she's just like, okay, cool. What exactly can we do here? Okay. So, seeing exactly what that Cynthia can bring, I'm sure Michelle's looking to set up another Intellian B. Maybe even getting out an Articuno would be cool. In this game, it we'll see exactly how it goes for her overall it's uh there's a switch so i'm sure she's just getting uh set up there the best that she possibly can seeing what the seller wish can bring and the first card being a quick ball is going to be extremely helpful to her because she can grab whatever she needs no more no the other frost moth isn't really necessary I already got one set up i'm not really bringing up a frost moth so that's going to search out the Articuno. So she's going to go again, just try to stall for a turn, which I think is fine. She runs me out of energies. It can be difficult enough. So we see there's a heads there, and I'm assuming with her going with the Articuno play, I'm like, okay, goodbye Rillaboom's energy. Moving the energy from the Frostmoth. He's like, yo, we're going to go for that GX attack. You can see there's another crushing hammer in her hand. She's just not going to discard it this time. So. Just using my Turfield Stadium. I'm going to get out my second Rillaboom. And now this is where the deck, again, is kind of like on autopilot mode where it's like, which big attacker do you want to use? Do you want to use Rowag? Do you want to use Rillaboom VMAX? Do you even want to attack with Rillaboom V? Do you want to attack with Rillaboom? The choice is yours. One card that I do not play in this deck that a lot of us do play typically is Shaman. Um, with Rillaboom VMAX discarding energies, I really didn't think that I was going to get many in play. And if you watch through the whole series up until this point, you'd see that there's not that many energy in play. So, one of those things where, like, 
not an oversight on my behalf i do have some consideration behind it again um i i consider each deck a little bit more seriously as i play them in tournaments so one of those things where i just really wanted to see exactly what we if i was playing in a tournament next week i'd consider a little bit more seriously but right now i'm like nah so see using my gx attack doing the 200 damage to the burb and there is the jirachi so seeing exactly what michelle can do here i have four prize cards left already have a half damage intellion v on her side and yeah she's just deciding on what she wants to do Okay. Just seeing exactly what's going on. So there's an energy going off the Rao egg. And she's just powering up the Frost Moth in case it needs to retreat again. And there's no reason not to search out an Intellion VMAX with that evolution in sense either. You can see that she's just pondering on what to bring up with the boss's orders. I'm like, I have an air balloon. I have a powered up Rillaboom V. What what we gonna do? So that does do the 160. And it does do 60 again to the bench. We were like, yep, I think uh, that's probably your best choice. But here I'm big chilling. There's a Rillaboom VMAX. I'm like, yo, let's power up two energies so this guy, this Pokemon can actually attack. And I'm shuffling up because the other one right now, I don't think I had enough energy left in my deck to make it all happen i'm trying to get the energy recycler into the deck so let's go switch into the rillaboom v max this is the point of the game where it's like i'm gonna be down to one prize card michelle's gonna be at six even though i have uh, three damage four damage pokemon on my bench doesn't necessarily matter too much because her setup's not that great and there's the professor's research i'm like Yo, what what am I gonna get into this hands? Nope, no energy recycler. And here in case she marnies me, I'm just putting a Dedenne back into my deck. Because I do have another Pokemon communication, so I do want to have the opportunity to get into the energy recycler that's within those top cards. It's not in my hands. So that's why I put a Dedenne away. Not like I'm trying to make a mistake or anything like that. Just wanted to have a higher chance of getting that Dedenne than it being directly in the bottom of my deck. And I'm going to discard the one energy to do 180, the 180 plus the previous 150 to do 330, which will knock out that VMAX Pokemon. So she's playing a Cynthia and I'm like, oh, I put my Dedenne back. Oh, well, I was playing it safe. Maybe it was me playing too fancy, but at the same time, I just want to make sure that I was all good. I didn't want to get trapped with her with a uh, boss orders, start removing my energy and then start sniping around. So there's an Ordinary Rod. And we'll see exactly what happens after the Ordinary Rod. Crushing Hammer there. Taking away an Energy. There's a Dedenne. So she's just trying to Dedenne get some of that stuff going. There's an Italian V. So she is able to start getting set up again. But I'm chilling with a pretty strong hand here and one prize card left. 
I don't think it's possible for her to take a knockout. She's already used her GX attack. So this game is looking pretty locked up for myself. It would have to be something like a reset stamp or something like that. But she's just going to do that and hope that I just don't have the energy. Because at this point, it's just I have one prize card left that has the most HP left in play. And I'm like... Yo, I have that. I have Switch. I don't even need to try to go for the Energy Recycler, which I think I would have got. And then there's the boss orders to bring up a Jirachi, which has the lowest amount of HP. So I was able to win the whole series there. Pretty cool matchup if you ask me. That being said, thank you so much for watching this video. We will have two videos that go over each deck profile. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on what everyone on the channel is creating. If you want to help us grow as content creators, you could consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. Similarly, we have rarecandytcg.com if you want to pick up some merch. That being said, I'm Zach Lesage. You can follow me on Twitter at ZLesage pokemon that being said i got a jet but i'll catch up with all y'all next time have a good one peace